Now this is the relationship that we stopped in the last video. So let's do a cross product to write it in a better way. So we would have x times px times beta is equal to alpha times py times y. Now let's write x in terms of everything. Let's write x as a function of all the other variables. So x is equal to alpha times y times the price of y divided by the price of x times beta. And just for the sake of, of um, notation, let's write alpha divided by beta, just because these are these exponents taken together. And here we have price of y divided by price of x multiplied with y. It's, it's just to see that there is going to be something in relationship between the prices, between the exponents, between x and y. Now to show, to prove this relationship, let's substitute this x into our budget constraint. And recall that our budget constraint is the price of x times x plus the price of y times y equals to m. Okay, let's do that. So instead of x, we're going to substitute what we just found over here. So that would look the following. Price of x, we keep it like that, multiplied with x, which is alpha over beta times price of y times y divided by the price of x. So that was just x now, plus the price of y times y is equal to m. Let's do some simplifications here because we can do it. Price of x, price of x cancels out. So we would have now alpha divided by beta times price of y multiplied with y. So let's write this as a whole fraction and we do this for a purpose because we will see that we'll have to work with that fraction plus price of y times y from here equals to m. Now we can see price of y times y on both sides here and here. So our, our intuition would be to take it as a common factor, but we can't do that yet because we don't have the same uh, denominator. So let's multiply this fraction with beta to make a common denominator. So we would have now, we would have now the following. We would have, al let's write over here, alpha times price of y multiplied with y plus beta, because now we multiply the fraction with beta, price of y times y, divided everything by beta equals 2m. Now we can work with our common, with our common factor, price of y times y here and here. So let's take it, let's take it as a common factor price of y times y and here we have in brackets alpha and beta from the other term so alpha plus beta we divide everything by beta equals to m let's do a cross product let's do a cross product see what we get we would have now the price of y multiplied with y times alpha plus beta is equal to m multiplied with beta and now just to keep y times price of y because that's the money we spend on y so we would like to see how much we spend on y. Let's keep it on this side. Let's divide the other side by alpha plus beta. So we would have the following. We would have price of y times y is equal to m multiplied with beta divided by alpha plus beta. And what does that mean? That means that the money we spend on y, so price of y times y, that's the money spent on y, money spent on y is equal to this share relative to our total money to our total income and what is this share beta divided by alpha plus beta well if you go to the initial question to the initial utility function we could see that is the relationship of the exponents that we were talking about is the share of this exponent relative to the total relative to one so if beta would be let's say 0 0.3 it means that 30 percent of our income we're spending on the good y that's the reason we did all this math to prove this property of the cobb douglas function that the exponent shows the share that we're spending on a specific good relative to our entire income and in this video we did it for y with the exact same logic, the exact same math, we're going to do it for x in the next video just to prove the same point.